Okay, so Lagrange multipliers, part two. Uh, same kind of idea, we're trying to find the extrema, so our maximum and minimum values of some function. So this guy right here would be our objective. This is what we're trying to find, the maximum minimum of. Um, and then subject to a constraint. So this guy right here would be our constraint. And for your constraint, you, um, if we're going to be real technical here, we do want to technically make sure it's a g of x comma y equals zero. So I do want to make sure, oh, and it looks like in this case, it's g of x comma y comma z equals zero. So I can make that an x squared plus a y squared plus a 3z squared minus 16 equals zero. All right, then we can go through and do our Lagrange multipliers. So we've got the gradient of f is equal to lambda times the gradient of g. Uh, so let's find our gradient. In this case, our gradient of f partial with respect to x, and then partial with respect to y, and then partial with respect to z, uh, as a vector there, of course, okay, equals lambda times, now I've got the gradient of g. So partial with respect to x, partial with respect to y, and then partial with respect to z. Then I'm going to list out all of my equations, just so I have everything kind of organized. So the first equation looks like is a 2 equals um, a lambda times 2x. Uh, looks like the second equation is a 0 equals lambda times 2y. And then it looks like our third equation is a 2z equals lambda times 6z. Um, and then our fourth equation, our last equation, is always going to be the constraint. So I have the x squared plus y squared plus 3z squared minus 16 equals 0. Okay, then we want to go through and start to solve these, right? We've got a lot going on. There's definitely a lot of equations here. Um, when I look at the first three, I realize that it's the third one that really only has a z on both sides um, of that equal sign. So I feel like that one would make it a little bit easier for me to solve just because then I can factor it. Uh, what I mean by that is I can rewrite that to be a 2z minus a lambda times 6z equals 0. Because then I can take a 2 and a z out. It's a little bit nicer when it factors. And then I have a 1 minus lambda equals 0. Okay, so then I've got a couple of solutions. I got z equals 0, and I got lambda equals 1. And then what you want to do from there is for each one of those solutions, you want to now find an ordered triple, so an x comma y comma z. Um, in previous problems, we needed just an x and a y, but here I clearly have an extra third variable. So I'm going to try to organize that um, and see what we need. So if I got z equals 0, it looks to me like I can easily use equation number um, 4 from there. If I can realize I got z equals 0 from there. Okay, so yeah, for, so equation 4, sorry about that. And then I'm going to end up with an x squared plus the y squared equals a 16. Okay, so that's that. And then I, so I've used equation 3 and equation 4. So let me go ahead and go back now and use equation 2. So I'm using a little bit uh, of every type, if you will, using a little bit of every type of equation here. Um, so then if I looked at equation 2, I'm just choosing equation 2 because it has a 0 attached to it, so maybe it's easier. And it looks like I got 0 equals 2 times lambda times y, which tells me I've got two options, that lambda equals 0 or y equals 0. But... Lambda cannot be zero if we will remember Lagrange multipliers because otherwise you'd have a zero gradient, which does not make any sense. So let, we got y equals zero. All right, so then if y equals zero, I can go back to my choice again of equation four one more time. And I realize now I'm going to have an x squared equals 16. So I got x equals plus or minus four. So then I got some ordered pairs here, right? I got the plus or minus four for x, zero for y, and a zero for x. Or zero for z, excuse me. All right, not so bad. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the lambda equals 1. So if lambda equaled to 1, because that was the other option that we had, and I think I missed it. It should have been a 1 third. Let's go back and fix that. Because this one, this factor, this would have been a 1 minus 3 lambda. So that would have been a lambda equals 1 third. Okay. So when I go back and I see that lambda equals the one third, uh, what could I do? I could use, uh, I've already used the third equation, so maybe I'll go back to either the first or the second. So I'm not going to matter too much. So I'll go back and look at the, oh, let's just go back and look at the first equation just for fun. So for the first equation, I'll have a two equals a one third times the two x. And then from there, you would realize that an x is going to equal three. 
Okay, so then I should use the second equation now because I do definitely still want to solve for uh, y as well. And again, if you look at the second equation, it's really the exact same concept. Um, you're going to get lambda equals 0, which can happen, so y would have to be 0. Okay, so I got an x equals and a y equals, so now I'll move on to the fourth equation to see if I can get a z equals. So if I looked at the fourth equation, I got a 3z squared minus 16 equals 0. So then from there, I got z equals plus or minus, <clears throat> oh, so I don't know where that 3 went away. Let me try that again, go back and look at that fourth equation, sorry. Um, that would have been a 9 because 3 squared plus 0 squared plus a 3z squared minus 16 equals 0. And then when you go through and solve that, I'm going to get z equals plus or minus, um, and it looks like I'll get the square root of 7 thirds. So square root of 7 thirds. Let me write those ordered pairs over here, uh, where x was 3, y was 0, and z was plus or minus the square root of 7 thirds. Okay, so we got a bunch of ordered pairs. Let's write them all out one more time so we have them all. It looks like I had a plus or minus 4, a 0, a 0, and let's even write that out a little bit nicer, um, just so that we're on the same page. I'll put the positive 4 as one of them, and the negative 4 as the other one, and then I had a 3, a 0, a square root of 7 thirds, a 3, a 0, and a negative square root of 7 thirds. And again, just like we did in the first part of Lagrange multipliers, we want to go ahead and plug that back into our objective. And let me write that out one more time. f of x comma y comma z in this case was a 2x plus z squared. And that was just coming back from looking at the original problem. We're going to plug it in. Biggest one's the max. Smallest one's min. So if I plugged in 4 comma 0 comma 0, I ended up with 8. If I plugged in negative 4 comma 0 comma 0, I ended up with negative 8. And if I plugged in 3, comma, 0, comma, square root of 7 thirds, I ended up with 6 plus 7 thirds. And then for this one right here, I also ended up with a 6 plus 7 thirds. So then you can start to realize, and we can figure out which ones are <clears throat> our maximum and which ones are minimum. So 6 plus 7 thirds would be our 25 thirds. Clearly, 25 thirds, all right, is going to be a little bit bigger than 8 because 25 thirds is slightly larger than 8. So then that means this guy right here was our minimum, and both of these were our maximum. So you can identify what your minimum is and your maximum are. Um, it looks like I have two maximum, all right, and they occur at 3, comma 0, and the plus or minus the square root of 7 thirds. All right, so our maximum um, is the 25 thirds. And it occurs at, it looks like, the 3, 0, uh, and the plus or minus the square root of 7 thirds. And then, of course, our minimum is negative 8. And it occurs at uh, the negative 4, comma, 0, comma, 0. All right, and there's your conclusion for that. Uh, same steps each time. So let's review them one more time. Uh, you have your gradient equals the lambda times the gradient. That's the first step. And then you're going to write out all of our equations. So what we did over here is we wrote out, wrote out all of our equations. Uh, in this case, we had four of them. And we had to go through the process to solve for some ordered triples. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit more complicated than others, uh, but each case you're going to end up with some ordered triples, and in this problem I ended up with four ordered triples. And then once you have those ordered pairs or ordered triples, you plug them into your equation. Biggest one's the max, smallest one's the min. And then you get your conclusion. Ta-da!